Welcome. This question says, consider a rod of uniform charge totaling 9 coulombs. The rod lays on the x-axis. It extends from plus 3 to plus 7 meters. Use calculus to show the electric field at point P located at plus 1 meter. On the x-axis is 3 quarters Ke Newton coulomb. Newtons per coulomb. So here's our rod. I'm going to show it as like a literally a bar of charge. I'm going to say it's charge Q. We can sort the numbers out later. This is plus 3 meters. This is plus 7 meters. And then we got to envisage our point P. So our point is here, P. And that is a plus 1 meter. Um, and I want to know the electric field at that point. Again, I, I'm not said whether it's positive or negative uh, charge. I'm going to assume it's positive charge. So this would be E pointing in that direction. Um, and so I need the relationship. And the relationship is, well, we know that E is equal to KEQ over R squared. So with a little bit of thought, I can figure out that for a distributed charge like this, my total electric field would be the integral Ke dq over r squared. And what I'm envisaging there is that I'm dividing this rod of charge up into a whole bunch of little charge sections. And each one has a value of dq. And so it's like I'm saying, OK, get the first slice. What's the electric field caused by the first slice? Consider the second slice. What's the electric field caused by the second slice? And so on until I get to the last slice. What's the electric field caused by the last slice? So that's my fundamental relationship. And the first thing I realize is that I have no idea how to integrate 1 over r squared with respect to dq. So there's a problem. And so somehow I need to translate that dq into a dr. And so I do a little side calculation. And if this is dq and the width of this is dr, and that is q, and the length of this is l, then I can use a physics approach and say, OK my little bit of charge dq is equal to dr, the little bit of width, times my linear charge density. So dq is equal to dr times and my linear charge density is basically how many coulombs per meter do I have in this rod. I know the total number of coulombs. I can figure out the total number of meters. I know it's uniform charge, so it's, it's, it's evenly distributed. So I say, well, my total charge is Q over my total length. I'm going to say that's just L, just to keep it in letters. So I can say, just to write it a bit more conveniently, dq is equal to q over l dr. If that's difficult to appreciate, one of the things you can say is that the little charge over the big charge is like the little length over the big length. So I can say dq over q is equal to dr over l. And rearranging, you can see it's the same uh, relationship. I prefer this relationship using linear charge density because it gets at the physics of what's going on. But this ratio is also a, a convenient way to get to the same, to the same end. So I can then substitute this back in here. And I say, well, e 
is equal to my integral with k e over r squared times q over l dr. Let's take out all the terms that are constant, so e is equal to k e q over l times the integral of 1 over r squared dr. Just using integration, e is equal to k e q over l, and that's going to be, well, that's r to the minus 2, so if I integrate it, I get minus 1 over r. So now I have to work out my limits. And my limits are often misunderstood. <laughs> so the limit, of course, is the longest distance between a slice and my point of interest, and the shortest distance between a slice and my point of interest. So if I look at this, it's 7 minus 1, because this is a positive 1. So that would be 6. And this would be 3 minus 1. So that would be 2. Clearly, I can put my point of interest anywhere on this line and have the same problem. All I would be doing is changing my limits. And you have to be able to visualize it. So then I simply turn around and say, OK. Then if I can squeeze this in, let's do that so I have a bit more space. So E is equal to, now let's put numbers in. It's going to be uh, uh, KE times Q, and Q is going to be 9 over L. Well, L is the length, which is 7 minus 3, which is 4. And then I have minus 1 over 6 minus minus 1 over 2. Which equals, I'm rapidly running out of space, KE, 9 over 4. And I have, let's reverse it, it's going to be 1 half which is 3 over 6 minus 1 over 6, which is 2 over 6. So that's times 2 over 6, which equals, and then I do my uh, 2 9s are 18, 4 6s are 24, 3 goes into 18, uh, 6 goes into 18 3 times, 6 goes into uh, 24 4 times, 3 over 4, Okay, and most common mistake at this point, somebody's done all this work and they forget to put their units down. It would be newtons per coulomb. And there's my answer, which is the answer that I'm trying to find. It says, show that it's three quarters of a, a Ke newtons per coulomb, and I have three quarters of a Ke newtons per coulomb. So if I ask this in an exam, I would want to see a good diagram. I would want to see a, a clear statement of the expression that you're using. I'd want to see a clear justification for swapping the dq into q over l dr. And then I'd want to see the fact that you can do the integration. I'd want to check the fact that you know your limits. And then you can do the math. So there's a lot of steps in this. It brings a lot of things together. Um, it's doing it the physics way. We, we're justifying things in terms of physical uh, relationships. And it's a nice skill to have. Um, so there we have it.